When they move to Cornwall, Charlotte, Sean and their children are eager to embrace rural living. With one of their sons interested in keeping bees, they're particularly keen to learn more about this increasingly popular pastime. So we're sending them to meet a family whose life revolves around bees. Belinda Bright, along with her husband and sons Steve and James, run a family business making protective clothing for beekeepers. How did you manage to get started? Well, um, my father had an interest in bees originally, and so from there we've sort of developed our own interest and started making the clothing originally. Over the years my sons have come into the business and we've managed to expand it now to accommodate all the equipment that all beekeepers would need. And what's the basic bit of kit I need to get started? Well, my friend, you need a uh, beehive, something like this. We do. This is a national beehive and uh, comes with a roof, obviously. The upper compartment of the hive, known as the super, is where the honey is produced. The queen bee is kept separate by a queen excluder in the lower part of the hive, known as the brood chamber, where eggs and larvae develop. So the queen can't okay. come up That's through there, up through she the can't mesh. lay in your yeah. honey. And then they draw these frames out and she lays her eggs and larvae in there and wow. it just makes it easy to inspect and manage. Um, smoker, handy, just if they get a bit aggro you can use the smoker. <laughs> and uh, some bees and some a bee bees, suit. Yes. That's, that's basically what you need to start with. Before they can approach the beehives outdoors, Charlotte and Sean must get kitted up in protective clothing to avoid any stings. Although the face is only covered by a mesh veil, the peak of the hood protrudes out further, ensuring the bees can't sting the face. So this is Janie. I call them all girls' names because they are girls, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. So that is your inner lid. How many bees would be in a hive this size? I say probably about 60 or 70,000. That's a new frame that I put in. That wow. They've just started drawing Oh, they've just out. started to build it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, put all the wax in there, uh, the honey in it. Oh, clever. So there's more honey. Oh, that you can see. see, that's the pollen and stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Steve has noticed something new. The bees have decided they need a new queen and therefore have begun feeding royal jelly to a young larva they have selected. This has built a supersedure cell and means there will soon be a new queen in this hive. And then will she take over then? She'll take over, yeah. Both of them might be in the hive for a bit until the, the other one fails or okay. they kick her out. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Survival of the fittest, isn't it? And if we buy a hive this year, how long will it be before we can see some honey? You won't get any honey off your first year unless it's a really good year. You get your bees in April or June. You might be able to take a little bit of honey, but ideally leave them for the first year until your colony is built up. You would recommend to leave them anyway, even if it looks... Yeah, yeah. Steve's honey is completely natural and isn't processed or pasteurised. The flavour varies depending on the flowering plants in a particular area. Would anybody like the thick honey? Yes, please, can I try? So, how does the honey taste? Oh, it's lovely. Mm, very sweet. It's amazing. There's more depth to the flavour than, than you would from mm. a supermarket one, if you like. Charlotte and Sean have certainly had a taste of things to come if they do decide to make beekeeping a new family hobby. But before they can buy a hive, they need to find a country home. So it's back to our house search. <laughs>